how to upgrade your old Mac Pro with the fastest possible NVMe RAID card. Guys, welcome back to my channel. As you maybe have seen some of my other videos, I did quite a few upgrades in this Mac Pro already. For example, uh, earlier this year, I did the Samsung NVMe upgrade because obviously Apple has released a new BIOS that supported the NVMe boot. And back then I just used a simple $30 PCIe card. However, what I found out is that the NVMe actually uses PCI 3.0. So that means when you're using the four lane adapter card, the data goes from the PCIe 3.0 four lane NVMe to this adapter card, which obviously is also four lane and then goes into the PCI 2.0 in the Mac Pro. And that obviously won't give you the full speed that the NVMe is capable of, simply because PCI 2.0 cannot transfer the same amount of data than PCI 3.0, who would have thought? And to illustrate this a little bit more, up here at the top point, you see the data rate of four lanes of PCI 3.0. That's basically what the NVMe, I mean, from a PCI 3.0 standpoint should be capable of. Obviously that can vary a little bit, but the PCI 2.0 has a different encoding. I think it's an 8-bit, 10-bit encoding. So that means if you have 20 giga transfers on PCI 2.0, you actually have to subtract 20%. So that perfectly explains that when you're using this NVMe with a normal adapter card, the PCI 3.0 signal gets down to PCI 2.0 and you just get, uh, I think a maximum of 1,600 megabytes per second, megabits per second. Guys, you know what I mean. So that's uh, what I tested in the last video, as you have may seen. Uh, essentially, even if you don't use the RAID card, it's still approximately three times as fast as a normal SSD. But with the RAID card, you should be able to unlock the full speed, simply because you can put up to four NVMEs on that uh, RAID card. And what the RAID card basically does, it takes the data from the NVMe, sends it to a PCIe switch, and then the PCIe switch spreads it to multiple lanes. So in essence, uh, I will show this to you in a second. When we install the card, first we're gonna do the unboxing in part 2A, then in part 2B, we're gonna do the install, and then in part three, we're gonna do the speed test. You can always use the slider or the navigation in the video description below uh, if you're in a hurry. So what that card basically does, it takes the signal from the PCIe 3.0 signal, sends it to the PCIe switch, and then for example, this NVMe right here, instead of being limited to two, uh, four lanes PCI 2.0, it spreads it to eight lanes PCI 2.0. Therefore, I can get a different speed. So let's uh, list the speeds right here. So you can see, uh, first up is the two lanes PCI 2.0, and the second is the eight lanes PCI 2.0, and that would be 16 lanes PCI 2.0. So you can utilize a much faster speed. And with that, I have introduced the project to you. Guys, awesome for tuning in. Obviously you can watch my other Mac Pro upgrade videos as well. But right now, why don't we just get rolling with the unboxing and then jump to the install. So let's get started. Now guys, let's have a closer look at the Sonnet Fusion card uh, for the NVMe SSDs. So let's open this up. First you find the manual, which I'm gonna show you in a second, maybe a little bit closer when we install the NVMEs. And here very well packaged, the card itself. Let's quickly pull this out. And as you can see, the card is quite long. So let's see in a second how this fits. Uh, maybe I'll show you a few close up shots from the front and the back. You see it has this active cooling right here. So that's something I immediately noticed when looking at the pictures online that Sonnet uh, seems to have done a really good job uh, with the active cooling and there's also a passive cooling element behind here and it's all metal construction. So that really should keep your NVMEs really nice and cool. And uh, yeah, you can put up to four NVMe drives in here and then the PCIe Express switch uh, translates this to these lanes. And uh, one thing I also did uh, read up a little bit if you have the Mac Pro 4.1 or 5.1, I mean, I have the manually flashed 4.1, so it's a 5.1. This should also carry over to the new Mac Pro that comes out in uh, September. So if you're planning to buy the new Mac Pro 7.1, uh, 
that uh, card. You can take this card and put it into your new system. So that's very nice. And as you can see here in the PCB, here are the lines that carry the data to the PCIe switch, like I explained in, in the beginning. And that gives you, if you have a PCIe 3.0, four lanes in here, and then it splits it to eight lanes, PCI 2.0. So that's very nice. That's the miracle of PCIe switches. It makes the new PCIe 3.0 components accessible even if you only have the old PCIe 2.0 system. And yeah guys, I rearranged the shot and prepped the card. Uh, I took a Phillips screwdriver and looked into the manual. Let me quick zoom in for you a little bit here so that you can see that a little bit better because there are basically four Phillips screws that you have to loosen first, one, two, and then three, four, to get to the cooling element. So let me quickly take the screws off. Now guys, I jumped ahead a little bit. After you loosen those four Phillips screws, you can take this protective metal cover off. Works very nicely. And you can see the cart itself. And as you can see, very, very nice cooling element. So this works really well if you have like a good surface area to cool your NVMe. It should keep it much, much cooler than when you're just running it on a normal PC, on normal adapter cart. So basically turning this around, you again see a bunch of Phillips screws, which I'm also gonna loosen one, two, three, four, five. And then the cooler comes off, which exposes the four slots for the NVMe. And that, that you see that's permanently fixed for the PCIe Express switch. And you also have some LEDs. So overall, very nice design. Let's take this off as well. And then we can install the NVMe. Now guys, I took the cooling element off and put the NVMe in. So let's quickly fixate that here with the tiny Phillips screw. And as you can see, they also have like some ter term thermal pad that should uh, help to distribute the heat even more. They have it on the bottom and on the top side. So uh, one thing I also want to mention, I mean, if you put, let's say you put two one terabyte NVMe's in here and the Samsung 970 EVO works fine. I think the 970 plus works fine. I can put a list with, uh, the NVMEs that should work below the video, but I think someone mentioned the 970 plus or something it's called that didn't work. So you want to be a little bit cautious. Maybe uh, I think Sonet also has a list uh, on the web page, uh, which they tested this with. And yeah, I mean, if you were just using your old Mac Pro for occasional video editing, you're probably also going to be fine with the normal NVMe adapter card. So I think this is really for people who want the maximum speed, let's say you edit 4K video in HDR or you want to edit HDR content, let's say you have really big 4K files, that's when I think a card like this shines. So nonetheless, I'm going to put the cooling element on top again. So let's see, that should be the right way. And then I don't want to draw this out too long. I'm going to close this all back up together and then we're going to put it into the Mac Pro and so far, so good, guys. I prepped the card, everything is ready to go, and you see it's really, really long. So I really had a little bit of trouble to get this fit to fit in here. So I took the cooler cooler off, and yeah, you can pick, uh, because it's a 16-lane card, you can pick the bottom slot or the second slot. So obviously you can put the graphics card in the bottom as well, but for me, I choose this configuration. So let's carefully slide this in. And once you've done that, as you can see here, I carefully took the cooler out right here because I had I really had problems wiggling this in. So for me, it was a little bit easier to take the cooler out and then slide it back in. So let me quickly do that and then fix that down here. And then we should be ready to do the performance test. Guys, I obviously will show you the before and after. So that's it. So it slides into place, the card is installed. So let's do the performance check. Now guys, moments, uh, moment of truth. I am gonna push the button and start up the Mac Pro. And as you can see here, it boots, boots up just fine. Maybe the fans are a little bit loud. I upgraded some of the fans as well. If you wanna see the fan upgrade tutorial, and let me zoom in a little bit for you here. As you can see, the Sonic card is booting right up. And yeah, from my experience, I wouldn't expect like a huge uh, increase in boot times. After all, it's the old Mac Pro, so, but the card is gonna carry over into the 7.9. Uh, long time viewers of mine, you will also notice 
I upgraded the uh, memory from 24 to 48 gigabytes as well. I got a good deal, brand new 40 gigabyte DDR3 memory for I think $150. So that's pretty good. The uh, Mac Pro really is spec'd out. Almost the second fastest Mac Pro, uh, so to say. Not as fast as the Lupiani Mac Pro, but nonetheless, a good upgrade. So let's jump into the computer, guys. Now, guys, we jump to part three and I prepared for you some screenshots of the before and after. So that's the speeds that I got before when using the NVMe with the normal adapter card, the four lane adapter card without the PCIe switch. Very budget friendly, already pretty good performance. But when we also look at the temperature, so that's for example, the temperature that I measured before switching to the new card, 48 Celsius, so about 120 Fahrenheit. It could g get warmer depending on how much uh, ambient temperature and how much reading and writing I'm doing. Obviously, if you're using video a lot, then there's gonna be a lot of accessing of your NVMe right now. Surprise, surprise, I switched my image around um, to show you the temperature monitor. The temperature is significantly uh, cooler, 33 degrees Celsius. So uh, that's way, way lower than before. Guys, I have would have to look up what that is in Fahrenheit, but uh, suffice it to say, it's it keeps it a uh, cooling element of the Sonnet uh, card. It's really, really good. It does a great job of cooling the drive. So that's actually very, very nice. So I'm very happy with the temperature performance. So with having said that, let's quickly open up Blackmagic disk speed test, run the disk speed test right here, select the target drive. Obviously I still have my old SSD, the S8, uh, S8 SSD, but I'm using the NVMe as a system drive. So I'll just select the desktop and then hit start and see what performance we get. And so far so good. That seems to be a pretty good performance. I stopped it a little bit prematurely. So let's do this again and yeah, almost to five uh, write and two eight read. So that goes to show that this adapter card with the PCIe switch really brings way more performance than just using the normal adapter card, about a thousand more. So obviously you're probably only gonna need that if you're editing data hungry ProRes footage, that's what you probably would use ProRes if you want to make Pro. Every video, video editor loves, uh, loves ProRes. A uh, great codec for editing. Let's quickly also check the system settings. I did a few other upgrades that I, uh, uh, between my last video and right now. So I matched, uh, maxed out the memory at 48 gigabytes for the single CPU. If you have the dual CPU version, obviously you can go up to 96. Although I think that's also a little bit overkill. And also the CPU, instead of using the 3.06, I now have the maximum one. Although I have to say the, you don't have to put the highest CPU in here. So that's not necessarily giving you a huge speed increase, but it's nice to have nonetheless, if you can find it used and get a good deal. But guys, I digress, let's quickly go system report. And then when we look in the PCI section, you can clearly see that it's detected in slot one and it shows link width of four and eight giga transfers. So that's actually kind of interesting. I, maybe it's the internal NVMe, but basically what's happening, the PCI 3.0 gets translated via the PCIe switch on the RAID card to, I think eight lanes PCI 2.0, and that's what gives you the faster speed. So all in all, really nice upgrade if you're doing data hungry video editing on your old Mac Pro and also very nice because it will carry over to the new Mac Pro 7.1. So that's pretty terrific. Guys, let's jump out of the computer again to the part four summary and conclusion. Terrific guys, this concludes the final upgrade of the Mac Pro 4.1 and 5.1. Like I told you, I did a bunch of videos already. Maybe I, I'm gonna show this to you in a sidecar and you can see I collected quite a list of all the parts that I upgraded step by step. And uh, yeah, I think this concludes. This is the last video in the series. Unless you know, still know something that I could put in here, then let me know in the comments below. Obviously a Vega card, maybe it's a little bit overkill for such an old Mac Pro, but I mean, you could even do if you run Windows on this which I'm not a big fan of. You could do gaming. I tested it once. 
and it works pretty well, surprisingly well. The, the Mac Pro is still super fast. And um, right now I'm recording with the Canon. And usually if I record with the Canon, I'm doing it with the H.264 codec in IPB. So that means the individual video frames are kind of connected. So that's not an all I video and it's not the ProRes. So if I shoot video in a codec that's less demanding on the system, which I think I'm going to do soon as well with a new camera, then I, I, I would always say for, for doing 1080p footage like I'm doing right now, the system is almost going to be too fast, <laughs> which is ironic uh, given the fact that this system is from 2009. Pretty terrific. So let me know if you have any questions in the video description below. I can't think of anything else other than I've come a long way since I got this approximately about a year ago and I couldn't be happier. Maybe in September or no, I know in September when the new Mac Pro, the 7.1 comes out, I'm just gonna head to the Apple store and check out the other one and see what kind of performance that gets. Although I think almost the new Mac Pro 7.1, it's probably gonna be almost too fast. So maybe I put off that purchase, but uh, uh, that has nothing to do with upgrading the Mac Pro right here. I'm digressing guys. So let's wrap this up. I see you as a subscriber in the next video. Awesome for tuning in and uh, shout out to all other Mac Pro users. I think this is a great machine still after so many years. Apple did a great job on that. So with that, take care. And guys, obviously I don't just have Mac Pro tutorials on my channel, but a lot of other videos as well, such as these uh, PMR radio. So if you're a radio guy, ham radio or you're just looking for a license free radio you can find uh, different playlists on my channel page for audio equipment microphones audio interfaces and video re re video gear reviews uh, for example of my cameras so i encourage you to check this out as well i see you in the next video take care